Hey again everyone, and welcome to our January 2023 edition of Quick Kit. Links to everything we mentioned will be down in the description below. Let's get into it. Freefly announced their latest slow motion camera, the Ember 5K. This is their follow up to the Wave that they released back in 2020. The Ember features a Super 35 5K sensor capable of capturing 5K up to 600 frames per second, 4K up to 800 frames per second, and up to 1011 frames per second in a 4K 2.371 aspect ratio. That's some impressive frame rates for a Super 35 camera costing around £18,000. When you compare that to the pricing of Phantom cameras, the Ember looks really, really interesting. It also looks incredibly compact and lightweight, uses Sony's E-mount, which means you can use a massive range of lenses and adapters with it, captures ProRes internally, and features a newly designed control app, which should make shooting with it fast and easy. FreeFly also have a pretty comprehensive looking set of rigging options for it, considering that it's only just come out. The footage I've seen from this looks so much better than what I saw from the Wave, so I'm really excited to get one in to test myself. We should be getting a demo unit fairly soon, so let us know what you want us to film with it in the comments below. Zoom released three new audio recorders, the M2, M3 and M4, all of which can record 32-bit flow audio. First is the M2, a recorder featuring a built-in pair of condenser microphones that can be used in both stereo and mono modes. It's physically designed to look like a regular handheld microphone and thanks to the 32-bit float, it's aimed at being incredibly fast and easy to use. The M3 is an on-camera shotgun microphone and recorder that allows you to record directly to a micro SD card as well as outputting a feed to your camera. This looks really awesome and could be a really great solution for run and gun content creators and videographers. The M4 is a four track audio recorder that features a similar set of features to the M2, but it features dual XLR inputs alongside the built-in mic. It also has a built-in time code generator, so it can easily be jammed with anything you may need it to. These all look really awesome in their own right. I really like the look of the M3 and the M4. They look like awesome tools and 32-bit is a serious game changer for anyone working in unpredictable environments. Wooden Camera have released a few things this month, but one thing in particular that stood out to us is the cradle for the Teradek Bolt LTTX. This is available in both V or gold mount battery plate and it's basically a pass-through that allows you to slide in a Teradek 4K or 6LT. This means you can keep your camera configurations more streamlined than you would have if you had to mount the Teradek somewhere else. The Cradle also supplies several power outputs and is built well, though I do wish it was a bit more integrated. Being able to provide power to the TX in a bit more of a seamless way would have been really nice, as you still need to run cables to the TX. But for anyone wanting to rig their configuration in a cleaner way with a Teradek, this is a really great way to help. DJI announced a few new things, but their biggest announcement was the introduction of the RS3 Mini. This new 3-axis gimbal is aimed at smaller camera packages, and is incredibly light itself at just 850 grams, while still being able to deal with payloads up to 2 kilograms. It features a lot of the regular bells and whistles you expect from a DJI gimbal, and costs just £339, which does make it a very attractive option for any content creator using a mirrorless camera to create video. It does lack the better adjustment gears from the larger gimbals and the automated axis locks, but that's kind of not surprising given its price point. With the other two existing gimbals in the RS3 line, it's pretty comprehensive now. We just need one that sits between the RS3 Pro and the Ronin 2. Of course, Wix released their Apex 360 battery series, which have been primarily designed around providing power to higher draw LED fixtures. Powering fixtures like the Aperture 600D or 300X off of batteries is a really common question, and these new batteries will be a great solution for that. The batteries have a 367 watt hour capacity and are available in both low and high voltage versions, depending on what you need. They have some pretty decent run times and look to have a well fleshed out ecosystem of accessories around them for a range of different lights and use cases. They are priced pretty decently too, considering their capacity. I can see these being a very popular solution for anyone who wants to power their high draw lights on location with the freedom of using small, powerful batteries. Earlier this month, Panasonic announced their latest mirrorless camera, the S5 II, and the headline feature has to be the addition of phase detect autofocus. This was something people have been screaming for from Panasonic for years now, and the S5 II really does deliver. The autofocus system is excellent considering it's their first time using phase detection. The camera is also excellent in a lot of other ways, and we covered it all in our previous review video. So if you want to learn more about it, you can check that out via the link in the description below. Panasonic have also released updated firmware for their Lumix S series of lenses for the S5II's updated autofocus system, as well as a new 14-28mm f4-5.6 macro wide-angle zoom lens. 
They also announced the S52X alongside the S52, which looks like the slightly more video focused brother of the S52. We should be getting one into test in the coming months, so make sure to subscribe if you're interested to see how it performs. Lauer announced their Proteus lenses back in November, but they have finally released some more details about them, as well as some example footage. We actually have a set in at the moment to check out, and should be doing a video review of them soon, so let us know if you want to see anything specific in the comments below. Pricing of these is pretty competitive for Super 35 2x anamorphic lenses, at roughly £5,249 per lens. The Atlas Orions are probably the closest lenses comparatively, in price and specs, and they sell for roughly £9,000 per lens. This puts the Proteus at a very good price point, and in our video, we will explore whether they are worth your hard earned cash or not, so make sure to subscribe to not miss that. Right, let's get into our quick fire honourable mentions. Links to details about these are in the description below. Axum released the Power Cage 2 and Power Cage Pro 2. Apple released their range of M2 processors, which look like another awesome set of computers for anyone working creatively. Ari announced a small pin for the LLS1 support, which will now come with the LLS1 or be available as a spare. The Bosma G18K MFT camera is now available to order. Bright Tangerine released the FX6 cable hook, which is great for keeping your FX6 monitor cable a bit tidier, and it's only 15 quid. Canon released details on a couple of new sensors that look pretty awesome. Hopefully you get to see them in a camera soon. Deity released their new ASM1, a new affordable microphone shock mount. DJI announced the single TX version of their mic, as well as the Mini 3 drone. DZO released their third lens in the Kata Ace line of full frame cinema zooms, the 18-35 T2.9. Fujifilm released firmware 3 for the X-H2S, which improves the autofocus as well as some other things. Ironglass announced that they will be releasing a Mark II version rehousing for the Helios 42 85mm T1.6. I really want to check this one out. Irix announced their new matte box as well as a new version of their 150mm T3 cine lens. Kipon announced the Calibri series of cine lenses. Movmax released their new rain deflector called Hurricane. Nanlite have announced a bunch of new LED cob and tube fixtures. Quasar Science have released a new update for their rainbow tube fixtures and a new free app for controlling them wirelessly. Red released beta firmware 1.7.0 for the Komodo and camera to cloud firmware has finally hit V-Raptor and XL live builds. Samsung released a new 4TB T7 SSD. Sigma released an E and L mount version of their 60-600mm f4.5 to 6.3 dg dn os sports lens smorig announced their black mamba cage with the s52 sony released new firmware for the fx3 fx30 venice 1 and venice 2 and their latest e-mount zoom the 20 to 70 millimeter f4g swit released their new mini s70 and s210 batteries tilter released the basic ring grip plus and a range of action camera cages tribe 7 have released an interesting e-ink take on a clapperboard Focus released their universal sliding top handle, and lastly, Wooden Camera released a set of accessories for the GH6, and a set of universal accessories, which actually includes some really cool looking bits. If you enjoyed this, please make sure you subscribe ready for next month's quick kit, and let us know what your favourite bit of kit to come out this month is in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching.